obviously in the U.S. we have a number of political issues that we discuss on the Young Turks often. Uh, and money in politics is a big problem. A lot of people aren't paying attention to that. The NSA is spying on us. A lot of people know about it, but they're not doing anything about it. <laughs> on us? No, on us? Not on Americans. Every <laughs> single person. Um, now, <laughs> now, these are big issues. Some Americans know about it, some don't. But one argument that's being made is that reality television, movies, TV shows, all of that is keeping us very, very distracted from things that we should be fighting against. One thing that people are upset about is the NFL and how it's considered an opiate of the masses. Uh, let's listen to Alex Jones make the argument. And yes, I know Alex Jones isn't the most credible person to make some arguments, but he might have a point here. Take a look. Cancel the Super Bowl or America dies. Our Bill of Rights and Constitution is being dismantled. And sports is the new God. It's seen as what is good and wholesome and pure. Don't get me wrong. Little League football, soccer, you know, jogging in a marathon, that's great if you are involved in it or your family is. But it's very, very sick that people uh, get depressed if their team loses or get euphoric. Uh, you know, like they've won the lottery when their team wins. This is scientifically crafted mental illness. If you go back to the time of Rome, uh, at the peak of their empire 2,000 years ago, uh, Cicero and others, historians at the time, wrote about how as the empire got more and more corrupt, it consciously funded more arenas, more sports stadiums, more gladiatorial events, more horse races, because as long as the people had a spectacle uh, to invest their psychological worth in future in, they didn't mind if they were becoming poorer or being overtaxed or being enslaved. People dress up in war paint and they get all serious and they go down and yell and scream for their team. Meanwhile, they don't know the three branches of government. They don't know what their state capital is. They're not involved in politics. All right, so there's the argument that the NFL just serves as a distraction, sports in general serves as a distraction, and Ben, as an avid sports viewer, you love all sports, would, or maybe not love, soccer, right? I love three of them. You love three of them, all <laughs> yeah. right. Well, as, as a fan of um, athletics. Sport. <laughs> um, just freaking European. <laughs> what do you think about Alex Jones's <laughs> argument? Is it just serving as a distraction? Well, first of all, Little League's fine. <laughs> Swimming, jogging, <laughs> jogging. <laughs> jogging in America, jogging in a marathon in America. Um, I mean, Alex Jones is a nut job. I mean, Alex Jones is capable of cognitive thought. He just doesn't exhibit it. So well, uh, I, I think, look, to you uh, know, give him a little bit of. Uh, I'm not going to give him any credit, but uh, go ahead. I, I think that he might make a, a decent point there, and I think it's a little unfair that he's specific, uh, specifically focusing on football. I think there are a lot of distractions in American culture, well, but there is something happening that causes Americans to be completely apathetic when it comes to our political sure, system. Sure, sure, and I suppose sports is one of the distractions. I mean, I don't know about sports being the new, the new god, <laughs> um, but. Uh, Look, first of all, I know the three branches of government. I know more senators than Alex Jones, also, and I know where my capital is. You're also very rare um, well, in, that's in true. America. Uh, no, but no, I, I don't. I don't think so. And I, I don't. I think that that we have a long history, uh, more than a hundred year history in this country, longer of caring deeply about sports. The rest of the world cares deeply about sports, so this is certainly not an American problem. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, I, I hate soccer, but I hate Jeez. soccer in America. I don't hate soccer in the world. Like, I get it. If I were British, I'd be a huge soccer fan, right? right? If I were uh, Brazilian, yeah. I'd be a yeah. huge soccer fan. So they have those issues there, and in fact, perhaps even more dramatically, because they have more abject poverty, at least in, in parts of South America. So. Like, yeah, he stumbled, you know, broken clock. He stumbled into a, a arguably valid point that we, that we focus too much attention on things that are trivial mm -hmm. and not enough on things that matter. But I mean, then we live in a country where you gotta go to lunch with guys like Alex Jones. And I don't wanna go to lunch with Alex Jones. I don't wanna have him over for coffee. I don't wanna talk to guys like that. Do you so, wanna see him without a shirt? Cause we have a video <laughs> we can provide. Definitely. <laughs> that, that's the first thing I thought when I saw that. <laughs> That dude naked. Um, so you know, look, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an, uh, the, the team, the sports team I care about most, and I care about a lot of them. The team I care about most by far is the uh, Oakland A's, and that is a team that since 2000 has had great success, but has ultimately been heartbreaking 
in the postseason. They get there, and it's always a great story when they get there because they don't have as much money as everybody else. It's a true sports underdog story. They, they play in an old school stadium that hasn't been financed with taxpayer dollars. It's a dump. It's and, the and they get there, and the sewage backs up, and then they lose in the final game in six seasons in the last 13 years. And I can't really totally function for a couple days afterwards. You're distracted. And I don't like people saying, hey, it's just a sports team. I want to punch them in the face. Like, I got it. I got it. I got it. I don't care. These guys don't know me. They don't care about my problems. It is irrational. It is, I get it, it's irrational, but it's shared by so many people that at some point by using the same argument that, hey, maybe it is natural that there are gay people because when they say, hey, it's there, there are, you know, when we make, when you and I and everybody else and the Young Turks makes the point of, look, the penguins are gay, okay? Animals are gay in the world. It's not unnatural. It's as natural as being straight. Well, if this many people react this viscerally to it, maybe this is natural, too. Maybe it's yeah. not the worst thing. You know, this argument kind of reminds me of what happened in America during the Great Depression, and it made me realize that some level of escapism is actually healthy. So, obviously, it's not good if the masses are distracted to the point where they don't pay attention to what's happening in the country. But, you know, during the Great Depression, people would go to the movies. Right. Uh, the, the film industry thrived at that time because they needed a way to stop thinking about how disastrous their lives are. Right. So I think that there is something healthy about that. Um, but Drew, how do you feel about people like Alex Jones saying that you're part of the problem? <laughs> I just like what you just said, the piggyback off that. I feel like it's a release. Like uh, there's problems, there's everything, but nobody wants to think about these problems every second of their life. Right. There's some sort of enjoyment. It brings families together. Like it's a certain time. People don't realize that how much like. You have problems at home. I guess sometimes you have problems at home, but some reason a, a sports game brings you and your parents together for some sure. weird unknown reason. Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of like I, everybody's a critic on. You can have you can criticize anything till till it's dead and like make you feel like you're doing something wrong. But there's also so many positive things that come out of these sports games and like employment and you know funding and like inspiring children that have nothing else besides this game to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So I mean. It's a human connection to yeah, members true. of your family, to other people that is, I mean, I've had more conversations that I like about sports with my friends than anything else. And I, I've had more conversations with just random people in an elevator about right. sports than anything else. It's just, right. They it's don't know thing. that I play. They didn't know anything. It's just like some sort of way. They you just can look at you and they just think, that, that guy's definitely a model. <laughs> if you're wearing yeah. a hat, I was wearing a hat that had a logo on it. And in the it, immediately, you know, hey, I like your hat. I like your hat. Broncos talking about the Super Bowl. We had a nice, lovely conversation. It does. It just makes you feel, I don't know. But now let's contradict ourselves. Because okay. I mean, now, because like, <laughs> Like, there's obvious value in sports, right. and I, Alex Jones and I would differ significantly on where the value mm -hmm. st starts and where it stops. But to the overall point that has it gotten too big, I mean, the fact is we still cared about sports passionately in 1957 when we weren't using taxpayer dollars to fund stadiums and where we weren't giving huge tax breaks that now add up to whatever you can make an argument of close to $4 billion mm -hmm. since 1986 to the NFL, which is no business being a tax-exempt organization. So. Have we gone too far? Does, it, does sports feel incredibly corporate now when we rename every stadium after a company that doesn't even touch human life generally? How did they get tax exempt in 1986? What did they? I mean, first of all, you know, baseball's got an antitrust right. e e e um, exception with Congress that it's had since the late since the 1930s, yeah. forever. It's had, or maybe even earlier, but it's had forever. And Football is, you know, I mean, they have a strong, powerful lobby. There's a value to having those teams and those, you know, the, the New Jersey didn't want to lose the Giants and the Jets, so they built that stadium to make sure they stay. That happens with teams all the time. You're seeing slightly less of it now as more and more teams are actually privately building their stadiums. They right. still probably get some huge tax breaks, but at least they're, they're not using public money to build it. Yeah. Well, we are going to have a discussion about the nonprofit status or uh, the tax exempt status, I should say, of the NFL. But I do want to close this topic by saying, you know, whenever it comes to political apathy or apathy in general, when it comes to news, I think that one thing that you can focus on is, you know, bettering the information that the media puts out there, because I think a lot of people don't have access to real information. They, they rely on local news or they rely on what they see on MSNBC or Fox News. And it's not 
always real information. It's not concrete or comprehensive education. I think if people are as educated as they can be on the issues, that political apathy would cease to exist. Um, well, not cease to exist. Some people are going to be apathetic no matter what. But information is more important. And the media has to fight against the distractions in some ways and educate people on what's just going on in the world. Very quick. Just, but, uh, I'm sorry. I've talked so much. But rooting for sports has become you are sort of ex buying into this sort of this giant sort of corporate entity. I yeah. mean, sports used to be a little different, you know, and, you know, these teams were all owned by a guy. And right. sure, he was a rich guy, but I mean, they, you know, and the TV dollars weren't so incredibly dramatic. CBS just stunned the television world today by agreeing to a deal to show Thursday Night Football on CBS starting serious? next season. Yeah, starting next year. It was a huge, it's a Which giant mega deal. Hate. Which I'm sure the players, Why? because of this, this, these short weeks, you got these guys already feel oh, like they've been. Thursday night in general. Yeah. Sunday. You play Sunday, and then you have a, you have to come a quick turnaround. Sure. You're, first of all, your bodies aren't even healed for a, a, a full week, but then you play a short game, like on a Thursday game, and you want somebody, you want like the best product, and so it's kind of like players are like, you know, and it's especially injuries and coaches, and you get influence from up, up up above. They're like, how do you feel? And you're like, you kind of in your mind, you're like, I feel like shit, but I can't tell the coach this. So, but the, and the NFL, which we know has enough money, yeah. but here's an opportunity for a little more, more. and CBS, to, which has a great Thursday lineup, but they're right. like, we don't care. We want a piece of this. We Wait, want to be able to promote the rest of our CBS lineup. took it off the NFL Network? It's CBS stole it away? cast on the NFL, oh, okay. and the back half still going to be on the NFL yeah. Network. Because right. I feel like not a lot of viewers would watch the Thursday night game just on the NFL Network, because not a lot of people had NFL Network know. with their cable station. Yeah, and also how many times can you watch it's the Browns crazy. play the Titans in those Thursday night games? <laughs>